Good morning. Welcome. Welcome. A um, few announcements for you this morning. Um, first off, um, on the back page, the inside back page of your bulletin, you'll notice on Tuesday that it says the stitching group meets uh, between 1.30 and 3.30, not this week, okay? That's going to be the Ladies Guild, the Guild meeting at noon that day. And men are invited to it too, just so you know. And there's a couple of us that are already planning on being there. And I was officially invited this morning by Margaret. She said I could come, so I'll be, I'll be there for sure. That's one thing. Second thing is, of course, uh, at the back of the church, you'll find a basket. The basket is there to receive the palms that you received last year. If you would like to return them back to the church, uh, Brian will burn those for us and we'll sieve them and add a little bit of oil to them so that we have palm um, ashes to then use on Ash Wednesday. So we'll need that. Um, also, and thank you, Helen, um, the compass uh, books, are we have more of them back there. Last week, we all the ones that we had here in the church were given out. We have more of them. They're here. That's going to be the compass book is going to be our Lenten study this year, uh, Wednesdays at 10 o'clock in the morning. And it's good. The entire series is on compassion, and it's really neat. I've been reading through it, and it's quite good. So looking forward to doing that study. And any that would like to join us on Wednesday mornings, that would be wonderful if you could. If our numbers get too big to be in the boardroom, uh, meeting room there in the office, we'll move over here and we'll make sure that we have it warmed up before we meet together for that. And the last thing, of course, is we have annual general meeting coming up and Helen's going to talk to us for a minute about that. Thank you, Paul. Um, so yes, annual general meeting is coming up quickly. The 2022 report is going to be available by next Sunday at the latest. I'm actually hoping to get it out on Friday and it'll go out to the emails and then there'll be hard copies available in church next Sunday, two weeks before our AGM. Hopefully everyone's got the AGM in their calendars. Also, Brian, Lanny and I will be available between the services in the hall to talk to anyone if you have any questions or comments or feedback or want to discuss or understand any part of the annual report or anything uh, therein. So we will be available in the hall between the services because we don't want to interfere with Coffee and Fellowship after this service and we want to be available to the 8.30 um, congregation as well. So. Uh, please do expect that um, in, in your inboxes Friday, maybe Saturday, but certainly before Sunday next week. Um, also, Parish Council is going to be meeting on Wednesday uh, to go over the final draft um, and approve it. So uh, that will be happening um, this Wednesday. Thank you all very much. It is our pattern within the Anglican tradition here on the island that we acknowledge that we meet on the traditional lands of our First Nations brothers and sisters, in particular the Wasonic people who were the original people that arrived in this particular area and the Sartlet First Nation tribe here in this area that we reside in. We give thanks for their story, their stewardship of land and water and the plants and the animals through the many generations. Let us also remember all those who have been part of this congregation through the many years that it has been here, St. Michael and all angels, and we are all part of that this morning, that congregation. So we give thanks for everyone. We're going to join together in our opening hymn for this morning, and our opening hymn is number 381 in the Blue Hymn Book, Common Praise, Praise My Soul. Thank you.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us join together in the words of the Colic for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us join together in the words of the collect appointed for today found at the bottom of page two in your leaflet. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Would you please be seated? There are some kids, wonderful. <laughs> Hi, good morning, welcome. So I brought something with me this morning to share with you and to show you. What's that? A potato chip. What's the best part of a potato chip? Okay, Marnie says the crunch. Any other ideas? What's the best part of a potato chip? 
Salt, good, somebody knows Marnie, you get to hold that one. So potato chips, like the one Marnie's holding, are wonderful as potato chips. Would you hold that for me for a moment? But potato chips that look, okay, can I have that back for a second? I got some of them out. I got enough of them out. Good. Okay, we'll put that there for now. So what I've got left here is what I would consider to be potato chip dust. Now potato chip dust still has salt mixed with it, but they're not as good as potato chips like the one Marnie is holding with the salt on them. Right? Because it's kind of all mixed together. Right? So in our gospel reading for this morning, Jesus is talking to the people that are gathered by the side of the lake there. And he says to them, you, yeah, God says, you are the salt of the earth. So what does that mean? What does it mean if we're the salt of the earth? We're like that salt that's on that potato chip. We're there for one purpose, to help to flavor the world and make it a better taste, right? Not all mixed together like this, but when I eat a potato chip that looks like that, I can taste that salt. But when I eat them like this, it's all mixed together. It just doesn't taste as good. It's not as good. So we are the salt of the earth. But God, Jesus also said this to us. You can get to the point where you lose your saltiness. What does that mean? Do you know what it means to lose your saltiness? It means that it doesn't taste good like it was supposed to. And we can lose that saltiness if we're not careful. But if we use our saltiness and we share it, we share our love, we share our time and our talents with everyone around us, we're going to help to flavor the world and make it a better place. So, I don't like them like this, okay? I do like them like that. And my favorite ones, salt and vinegar, okay? My wife's favorite ones are these plain ones like that. So that's why the bag only had a few in it, because I had to leave the rest of them at home so she could have them. So I just brought enough that I could mess up some so I could show you. Let's pray together for a moment. Gracious and loving creator, we ask now that, that we will be the salt. We will be the light, the light for this world. And that we will share that saltiness that we have within us, that love that you have given us for you and for your son, Jesus Christ. And we will share that love with all of your creation, with all of the animals, all of the plants, and all of human beings, all of us that are here in this place. We ask this now in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I think Marnie, Mrs. Sember's going to take you off and we're going to have some time together. And thank you very much. Thank you. And our service now continues with the sharing of the word. The first reading is from chapter 58 of the book of Isaiah. Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask me of righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? <clears throat> Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day, 
and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your, from your, your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. Remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger and the speaking of evil. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Psalm 112, we will sing the refrain. Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be, af be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. Second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, 
so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's Spirit, for they are foolishness to them, and they are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. And the hymn appointed for this morning for Before the Gospel is hymn number 560 from Common Praise, the Blue Hymn Book, God, Whose Almighty Word. Would you please stand as you are able? The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, 
You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of Christ. I speak to you this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please be seated? So you may have noticed, or you may not have noticed, but when we started this morning, I didn't introduce myself. And I did that on purpose because that's part of our sermon this morning. So I want to begin this now by introducing who I am. My name is Paul, Paul Schumacher. And I am the interim priest in charge here at St. Michael and All Angels until the Reverend Canon John Pyrrhus arrives beginning in the 1st of May of this year as our new settled incumbent. So there you have it. I've introduced myself to you today. So now you know who I am. But what if I did it a different way? Hi, I'm the salt of the earth. Hi, I'm the light of the world. What would you think? <laughs> this guy's a little off his nut here maybe? or he's a little conceited about who he is. You would be unsure. You would be unsure about what I was doing, how I was introducing myself. And my guess is no one's ever done that to you, have introduced themselves that way to you. So why would anyone ever introduce themselves as being salt and light? What does the gospel this morning have to say about being salt and light? What did Jesus have to say about these things? And for that matter, what's the big deal about salt and light? Salt and light are two things which of themselves are pretty much useless to us unless they're applied, unless they're applied to something else. And each of them then results in that thing being better enjoyed. Let's look at it for a moment. Let's look at salt first and talk about it. So what is salt? And I want you to think particularly about table salt here. It's a chemical compound made up of sodium and chlorine atoms which are combined together to form a salt molecule. And salt is something that is added to other things. Salt can enhance the flavor of something. Many of us now have enjoyed corn on the cob. Now think about corn on the cob. When is it best? When you butter it and you put salt on it. Corn on the cob plain by itself, or corn even cut off the cob, isn't as good as it is when you add some salt and some butter to it to enhance its flavor. Then again, salt can be used to purify things. And I think about uh, something that happened a couple years ago. My wife, Lynn, received from a First Nations elder an eagle's claw because there's some First Nations history in our family, in her family, not in my family. So she got the eagle's claw and she was told to take it home 
get a jar of coarse salt, put the eagle's claw down in the coarse salt, and leave it alone for a period of time, which she did. And surprisingly, all of the sinew and all of the, the stuff that was attached to that eagle's claw, it was gone. She had a beautiful eagle's claw, which she, she keeps. She has it now. And it's a gift. It was a gift from the eagle, but it's also a gift from our creator. And it reminds us of all the gifts of God's creation to us. But salt can also be used for other things. We've all enjoyed things that are pickled in brine. Salmon. But then one thing really comes to my mind, and it's something I enjoy tremendously. Pickles. Pickles are always brined, salted, and packed in that salt to preserve them. What about smoked meats or cured meats? Right now I can smell the bacon frying, cooking in that pan, and I can smell the wonderful smell of bacon, something I love to have for my breakfast. But think about how long that meat would last if we didn't cure it and we didn't smoke it. It wouldn't be edible for very long. So there's another use for salt. So these are just a few examples of how we use salt and how it helps us to enjoy our lives more. So what about light? Light is something that we really don't use until it hits another object. When light bounces off of something, we see that object. But light also provides us with warmth. The particles of light energy that are coming from the sun, it warms the earth but it also warms us, it keeps us warm and it keeps us going. We also benefit from the light that's produced by these type of lights too, but that's another source of light, but it's still light that comes to us. None of what we know would be the same if we did not have light. It would not be as God has in, had intended it for us. But then we need to think about what the gospel reading that we have this morning from Matthew has to tell us about salt and light. From Matthew's gospel, we hear Jesus saying, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. Now I want you to think for a moment about what Jesus is saying here. Was he speaking only to his followers? Was he speaking to the people that were gathered around on the side of the ocean, of the, the, the sea there? and that were listening to what he was saying? Or was Jesus also speaking to us? I think he was. I think Jesus was speaking to us. So if we are the, the salt, we're not meant to hoard that saltiness to ourselves. Or if we are the light of the world, are we meant to hide that light under a bushel basket, as the gospel tells us, so that no one can see it? I don't think so. For us to live as salt of the earth and light of the world, it indicates to me that I have to come to realize who I actually am. If we are to be the salt of the world, we are then have to be prepared to be tasted by all of God's created order. And if we are light, if we are to be light, we are also not to hide that light from view. For me, that means that I am here to flavor life to be the light of the world, the light of a world filled right now with darkness and mistrust, a light lacking in care for the well-being of others, and a world that disregards the health of God's creation. So if we are salt and we are light in this troubled world, then we are called by God through his son, Jesus Christ, to be that salt and to be that light but not just for those that are around us that we share our existence with. In our gospel reading this morning, we're invited to be part of that crowd that gathered around Jesus on that plain next to the water, next to the shores of the lake, to hear Jesus preach about how we are to love all of creation, and in particular, how we are to live with those human beings around us. Remember what Jesus is saying here. 
Remember the Beatitudes that we had in the gospel from last week that Jesus shared with his followers and with that crowd that had traveled for many miles to hear him. Jesus is saying the same thing to us. Love one another, be peacemakers, care for the sick, the lonely, the meek, the traveler, for we are all children of God and God loves us all. Jesus goes on to say this. Don't think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches others, they will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless you are righteous and your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. I believe Jesus is telling us this. We are already the salt. We are the salt of the earth and we are the light unto this world if only within ourselves, because we are children of our Creator. But we are not to hold that light to ourselves. It is not that we're to do. We need to, we need to spread it. We need to use it for others. We don't hold back being the salt and the light of the, of the world, but we are to make life better, better through our love, our love for our God and for all of creation. Now, I need to be honest with you here. I'm not pretending to be able to tell you how to go about you being salt and light. But I am sure of one thing. If we do this work in the world, God will reveal through us and through the presence of his Holy Spirit that we can do it. And we are there. We are part of God's creation. And in that moment, in that one moment that you sprinkle that salt, or you become the light unto someone else, one of God's creatures or all of his creation, you will taste life and you will experience light in a way that you have never known it before. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Try it. Spread your gifts. Spread your talents. You will never know how wonderful it can be until you share your saltiness, share your light, just as Jesus wants us to do. Amen. And as you are able, would you please stand now? And let us join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed as found on page 189 in the Green Prayer Book. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And would you please sit or stand as is your pattern for prayer and we're going to have prayers of the people. To the petition of God of comfort and healing, Please respond with, hear our prayer. God, we wait, we watch, we long for you. Renew our powers, refresh our spirits, restore our well-being. For you give new strength to the faint, 
and power to the powerless. God of comfort and healing, hear our prayer. May your church be found working among those who are in need in our local communities and around the world. We pray for relief organizations and give thanks for their attentiveness to particular ministries and needs and for the opportunity to support them in their work. God, steady their focus and multiply their outreach for good. God of comfort and healing, hear our prayer. We pray for the governments of the world, that each would be guided by the good of all, and that all would seek charity and peace. In our nation, we pray for King Charles, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, the Premier, and our local authorities. <clears throat> Give them grace and wisdom, insight and courage. God of comfort and healing, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who have cared for us in time of weakness, for those who have uplifted our spirits and given us new hope. We give thanks for those who have sheltered us and helped us, knowing the saving love of God in Christ. We pray that you will strengthen these gifts in us, that we may offer sincere consolation to those we meet who are in need. God of comfort and healing, hear our prayer. We pray for all who struggle with weakness of body, mind, or spirit. We pray for all who are caring for loved ones in illness. May they know themselves to be held in your love and sustained by your spirit. We pray for those we name in our hearts. God of comfort and healing, hear our prayer. God of abundance and wisdom, Renew and empower those who invite us all to the sacred feast at your table to hear the holy gospel of Christ proclaimed. We pray especially for our primate Linda, our interim national indigenous archbishop Sydney, our metropolitan Lynn, our bishop Anna, our priest in charge Paul, and Holy Trinity in North Saanich. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Papua New Guinea. God of comfort and healing, hear our prayer. We give thanks that Christ is our healer, our companion, and the way. We pray for loved ones departed who are renewed and refreshed in the love and light of God. And we pray for those who are on their way to you, that their journey home will be gentle and their homecoming a celebration. God of comfort and healing, hear our prayer. Lord, you are abundant in power, and your understanding is beyond measure. Since you have lifted us up to share life with you, keep us in the faith of Jesus Christ and hear the prayer we offer in his name. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. And now may Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you into, in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand as you are able? And let us share with each other the peace of God. The peace of our Lord be always with you and also with you. Would you share that peace with each other?
Penner Offertory Hymn appointed for this morning is number 645 from Common Praise. Come down, O love divine. <laughs> And let us join together in the prayer over the gifts found near the bottom of page five in your leaflet. God of compassion and forgiveness, receive our offering this day and make us one with him who is our peace. Jesus Christ the Lord, amen. And this morning we are using Eucharistic prayer number one. Thank you, Lenny. We're using Eucharistic prayer number one, found on page 193 in the Green Prayer Book. The Lord be with you. Also lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You have revealed your eternal plan of salvation and have shown your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to be the light of all people. Therefore, with angels and with archangels, we raise our voices in joyful praise to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick, and he ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer to you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we are using Eucharistic, uh, or breaking of bread prayer number six, found on page 213 in the green prayer book. We break this bread, the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. It is our pattern in the Anglican communion here in Canada and at this parish, St. Michael and All Angels, that we receive the bread, and we receive only one kind here at this time. All who are baptized Christians are more than welcome to join with us at the table, and we will come forward to the front here to receive the bread. And these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Would you please join with me in the words of the prayer after communion, which you will find on page six in your leaflet. Eternal God, in you we find peace beyond all telling. May we who share in this heavenly banquet be instruments of your peace on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. And we join together in the words of the doxology. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may it keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge of God, our Creator, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Comforter. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. And our commissioning hymn appointed for today is number 502 from Common Praise, the Blue Hymn Book, You Are the Salt of the Earth. So this morning we have one more thing that we need to do. Terry's going to come forward and she has something that she needs to share with us. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I uh, would just like to share with you a few uh, bits of information and details about our show Tuesday Pancake Supper coming quickly. February 21st from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And it's been two years, February 25th, 2020, since we had our last one. So I encourage you all to come out, please, and support us. Our team is working behind the scenes right now, getting all the preparations going. There'll be pancakes, sausages, whipped cream, Margaret Eagles berries, chocolate sauce, and best of all, children, a magician. Donald Dumphy, world-renowned magician, is coming here to entertain us. So please bring a friend if you can. Let's see how we can fill our hall again with some fun fellowship pancake dinners, raffles, gifts, and each other. Thank you very much. Terry just shared with you that there are sausages. 
just as good as the bacon cooking. Okay, <laughs> just as good. I will be there, Terry. I will be there, definitely. As we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world, we are commissioned by God to go forth to be God's people in this place, to share that light, to share that saltiness that we are with all of God's created order, with all of his creatures, with all of the creation that he has made for us. We are stewards of that creation. Let us go forth from this place rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen.